ah, I keep forgetting that's going to happen. All right. So, uh, taking a look today at I don't, have, I don't have, I can't see the notes on my canvas only see day one. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Thanks, Isaiah. God dang it. Broke my streak. Oops. That's not what it was. Uh, that's my family and Victoria's Secret. Uh, <laughs> canvas. Color letters. Sorry about that. Um, this is all the old info, but yeah, you know, still same downloads. Um, close that. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here at what we mean when we say cover letter. So our objective today is kind of to understand exactly what a cover letter actually is, and you know, uh, we'll also talk about like reference request letters, job acceptance letters, job declination letters resignation letters we'll mention those things however like the the big one that we're kind of spending our time on is, is definitely like cover letters you know because it's sort of a good format uh <clears throat> that really does kind of work for you to kind of figure out how to write all of those other types as well you just sort of swap out key pieces of information you know um so here's the thing um we are going to build cover letters in this class. Like that's going to be, again, I already mentioned this, but that is what your homework too is going to be. It's going to be having your cover letter and your resume actually both built. Um, if you feel like you were going to work for yourself, that's okay. Um, you know, I'd still rather you just create a very generic version. Um, but uh, I had a student who decided to work for themselves. Um, they were in school to learn how it was, it was kind of, she was on a pretty interesting journey. She was obviously like in school to, you know, study personal training. Like she was studying how to get an ass and she was in my classes. Right. Um, but she wasn't actually ever interested in working with clients or training people. She actually wanted to open her own line of like fitness clothing and be like an Instagram sort of fitness influencer um, and just kind of put stuff out there, but she never really wanted to train anyone. And it was kind of interesting. I was like, okay, um, you know, still wanted to get her NASM, still wanted to be certified and all that. Uh, and so when we got to this class and it was time for her to like build a cover letter, uh, she was like, hey, can I not write a cover letter from the perspective of like, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'd like a job. Um, can I instead write this letter to this woman on Instagram who is an artist? Um, I really like her patterns. I really like her style. And I want to put it on this line of leggings that I want to start. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why the hell not? That'd be fun. Uh, and she did. And sure enough, that woman reached back out. And now that is how this ex-student of mine makes her living. She partnered with this artist. She slapped her artistry it was really abstract, kind of cool, very bright, colorful stuff. Uh, put it on t-shirts, put it on leggings, put it on tank tops. Uh, and now like that's, she's got this line of stuff on Instagram. Um, so if you guys have something like that, if you have a real life situation where you're going to need a cover letter, um, maybe it's not necessarily for a job as a personal trainer. Maybe it's for something else. Uh, you guys are totally, absolutely more than welcome to write something like that. Um, uh, because I would love to have another really cool story like that. <laughs> now, uh, um, you know, we want this to be very functional for you guys. So you guys can actually, you know, use these things. Um, so anyway, that's what the cover letter is. It was, it was pretty freaking cool. It happened like in the middle of class too. Like, you know, she was, this girl was always on her phone, <laughs> which makes a lot of sense considering that she's, you know, she was becoming like an Instagram influencer. But it was like a constant battle to be like, get off the phone, you know. Uh, and then like we a couple of weeks later, like in class, or a couple of days later rather, uh, in class, you know, it was just like she was like, guess what? And you know, middle of talking about something, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what. <laughs> uh, and she was like, that lady wrote me back. <laughs> so anyway, um, annoying but very fun. <laughs> so let's take a look at what a cover letter is, right? Um, so cover letters, uh, you know, we're seeing here, it's mandatory to submit cover letters uh, in the recreation and leisure business. Oh, by the way, one other thing I want to mention. Um, you're going to see this term a lot, recreation and leisure business. Um, NASM clearly, I mean, they haven't told us this and 
I have not found the book that it is referencing, but very, very clearly all of these PowerPoints are coming directly out of like some textbook somewhere. Um, now there is no, I'm sure, uh, textbook written on how to like procure a career in the personal training field other than your regular NASM textbook, which has some basic information. Um, but this is literally like very clearly out of like a job hunting textbook. So some of these terms you're going to see, you're going to say like recreation and leisure industry. You're going to see a lot of examples of like um, the example cover letters that they build and example resumes and things like that, interview questions and stuff. Uh, you're going to see a lot of examples are coming from an industry that is kind of lateral to the personal training field. It's very clearly like a service industry, which we are as well. You know, like we are servicing our clients we're working for our clients um or we are working for a company where we have a very large list of clients that's very similar to like a cruise ship director or facilities manager uh or things like that you know that you'll see so i think that was just you, some of these things that you'll see in the powerpoints uh sometimes like the phrases uh if it sounds like it's a little off from personal training that's because it kind of is um you know uh but the information translates and you know all of the notes that i've got over here have kind of been translated um by me um so we've definitely kind of catered it much more like specifically to our industry but at the same time like i've also known trainers who started out as uh, you know working with clients and then they became like the gm of a gym and then you know, eventually that led them to be like the fitness director at another gym. Uh, fitness directors, guys, they don't train clients. They're in charge of the fitness department. So they're in charge of like making sure the training manager is doing what they're doing. Uh, they're making sure the sales team is doing what they're doing, like selling training memberships. Uh, but they're also making sure that like equipment is up to date. They're probably organizing like specific tournaments and stuff that might be happening at like a gym this is this is like they're they're all and you're not going to see these at a traditional gym you're going to see them at like a country club or something like that but that's very much in the fitness industry as well um you know there's a lot of money to be made in in that actually um so anyway that's that's a little bit higher up the ranks um so you're going to see some terms that like that where it says like mandatory in the recreation and leisure business um if that seems a little weird that's that that's why that's like that so um, but you know, the reason we're saying this is sort of mandatory, uh, is because without a cover letter, it just shows like a lack of professionalism, you know, um, how many times actually this, we'll take a little quick class survey here because I know it's, we're living in, in 2021 here. Um, how many of you guys, uh, and this is probably going to be a question, uh, for most of like my, my, my younger folks here, but how many times have you gone into a business looking for a job? And they go, yeah, great. Just apply on the website, right? And you go to the website, you fill out the application. What happens? Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing, right? Because, you know, you filled out the application, but so did 50 other people, you know? Um, but... Following up on that, um, doing a little bit of digging, which we're going to talk a little bit about when we get to the interview day, um, or or the resume day. Actually, we'll, I, we'll we'll just talk about this in general all the time. Uh, when you're job hunting, doing a little bit of digging, figuring out the person who's going to be in charge of your interview, the person who's hiring you, getting their name, getting their contact info in some sneaky way, and then sending them an email that is essentially acting as your cover letter, saying like, "Hi." I applied through the website, my resume has been uploaded. Um, or if you upload any other documents, and one of those documents is a cover letter, it just shows that you are putting more effort in than a person who just filled out the application. It shows that you are a little bit uh, more um, professional than someone else, you know? Uh, and that's gonna give you a leg up. So I know we don't necessarily have to do the written cover letter thing anymore. You know, we're not mailing these, which you'll see some information also in this PowerPoint where it's like, you're gonna mail it in this type of envelope. No, you're not. Uh, <laughs> you're probably doing it digitally. You're probably sending it as an email. You're probably, but you know, printing it and bringing it with you to your interview and things like that. 
um, it just shows, you know, it just shows that you're at a, a little bit higher level of professionalism. Um, just like, you know, uh, I know we live in, we're in California here. We're on the West coast, um, California, Oregon, Washington. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about this on the interview day. Like you should dress appropriately for your interview. And I know California, it's like freaking flip-flops are considered dress shoes in this state. Uh, but not during a freaking interview, um, you know, don't wear shorts, don't wear a t-shirt, don't wear jeans, you know, um, you do want to be professional. So, um, we want to try to like get that professionalism uh, shining from the start. We're going to start with the cover letter in order to do that. So what your cover letter is, it is the first point of contact for a job application. Um, and it's acting as a great way for you to open up dialogue with potential employers. So this is not only your first chance to really kind of like highlight who you are, it's also an opportunity to kind of open up some dialogue with uh, your potential employer. Now, Usually when we think of opening up dialogue, we think that it means, you know, having a conversation with someone in the here and now, but in a cover letters instance, it's like, this is going to give your employer something to talk about during your interview. Like if you bring something up in, in your cover letter, we're like, I really like how your company does this. I'm really excited. I've always wanted to be a part of something that does that. Right. Uh, if that comes up during your interview, they're going to say, man, you sounded really passionate on the, you know, in your letter and on the, your, your phone interview, like all these things. Like, it sounds like you're really excited about this. Um, and that's, that's somebody that they want to work with, you know, um, half of the things that employers consider. And let me tell you from personal experience, I have considered this as an employer, um, is that you've got to work with this person. You know, they I, like, I always look for somebody that is going to be the most responsible and best for the job, knowledgeable, things like that. Absolutely. Totally look for those things. But one of the other things that I look for is like, man, am I going to enjoy like standing around the water cooler with this person all day? <laughs> like, is this person going to be, you know, um, good at their job? And are they going to be a good fit in our office? You know, um, so your cover letter is a chance to kind of get your voice out there uh, and, and kind of highlight that, you know. So uh, like I said, applications without cover letters it does show sort of a, a, uh, a lack of professionalism. Now, there are a lot of different types of cover letters out there. Um, there's a cover letters that are responding to like a known job opening. So for instance, like if we literally just go uh, to the NASM job board here, um, and I just click this and we'll punch in my zip code here, hit search. Uh, and it looks like 24 hour fitness is hiring for a trainer, right? Um, you know, I'm going to read this job description very carefully and make sure that I know. I'm going to look at the job requirements and make sure that I meet all of them. Uh, and then, you know, I'm going to click on apply for the job. And this is all the information. Like, this is actually going to go straight through NASM's website. So I punch in my information here. Uh, you know, and, and kind of work my way through. And then here's my attachment, right? Uh, I'm going to choose to attach my resume and my, and then this can act as a cover letter if I want. Um, unfortunately, NASM didn't integrate it to where you can actually attach multiple files, which is kind of irritating because um, I would much rather upload my cover letter uh, as it is formatted and upload my resume as it's formatted. But if you can only choose one, upload your resume as formatted. And then you can write a cover letter here uh, in this section. So that's a known job opening, right? Like, you know, my opening line to my cover letter would probably be something like, hello, my name is Brad Thompson, and I am responding to uh, your job posting on the NASM job board. You know, um, hire, you are, it says that you are hiring for this position of certified personal trainer. So that's, that's a known job opening, but there are also prospective job uh, cover letters. Um, these are about possible positions. Um, you know, uh, that might not necessarily be open yet. This is the type of cover letter that I wrote to Sochi uh, when I was trying to get my job here um, because I didn't know if they were hiring. I just knew that I wanted to work here. So uh, a perspective letter would be something like, hello, my name is Brad Thompson. And uh, I recently, you know, became acquainted with your company. Uh, I'm very impressed. I was wondering if you are looking for instructors, you know, that would I don't remember what I said, but it was something probably like that. Uh, so a perspective letter is like, hey, 
I really like Equinox gyms and I think I'd be a really good fit here at Equinox in Santa Monica. Um, you know, I wanted to know if there are any job openings. So that's a perspective cover letter. Uh, and then there's also like networking letters. The one that, uh, uh, you know, Sine wrote was, was very much like a networking letter. Um, she was like, you know, reaching out to someone on the internet and like, hey, I really like your style. I think that we'd make a really good partnership if we were to partner together. Um, you know, that's a, that's a networking letter. And those are, those are valuable, you know? Um, those are also really good. So uh, that's kind of the, the, the several different types of, there are some other ones out there. God dang it. Ugh. There are some other ones out there as well. Um, you know, for instance, uh, there's reference request letters. Um, you know, that's where, I mean, honestly, you shouldn't have to necessarily write a full on reference request letter, guys. Like if you are using someone as a reference, you should be pretty close to that person. You know, um, you should be able to call them or talk to them in person, even just sending them a text and being like, hey, I'm applying for jobs. Do you mind if I use you as a reference? Yeah, do that, you know, and then, you know, uh, make sure you're not only using family members, you know, use friends, um, friends and family members, keep your references to, you know, maybe one of those. And then you want to have like some professional references, people you used to work for and things like that. Um, shouldn't necessarily need to write a full letter for that unless it's, you know, somebody that you've only met a couple of times, which in that case, I don't know what you're doing with like, a, you know, using them as a reference. Um, there's job declination letters. Uh, it always helps to write a letter saying like, hey, like I appreciate it, but I was on like a job hunting process and I've decided to kind of go in a different direction. Um, that's just going to show uh, a little bit of professionalism. It's also going to make sure that you didn't burn that bridge. Uh, that person's oh, very much going to appreciate, uh, you know, you sending them that letter. Um, so general tips here. These are sort of the tips and tricks before we actually dive into how to actually write this darn thing. Um, but guys, always keep your freaking cover letters to one page. Do not write the, the 20 page, you know, essay, uh, you know, uh, you're not trying to eat your doctorate here. Uh, you're just trying to procure employment. So, you know, keep it to one page length. Um, always, if you can, try to address the letter to a specific person. The whole to whom it may concern style letters uh, are often overlooked. They aren't personal. They don't draw the person in. Um, so, you know, uh, let's go. Let's say we said that was uh, uh, some job board here. Uh, let me go back to this. Let's see how easy this is. Uh, and see if I can find this within a couple minutes. Uh, if it doesn't, if it takes too long, we'll we'll bail on it. But uh, Buena Park is where this personal trainer is. So Buena Park, um, uh, twenty-four hour fitness. All right. So Buena Park, it's a looks like it's a sport location. Uh, so there's their address. There's their phone number. Um, let's see here. Studio stuff. Contact us. Ah, team members. Uh, Mm, maybe it's not on there. All right. Um, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. Let's go back to the careers thing and see if it's under here. Uh, club careers. 9141. And they were looking for, what was it? Certified person. They were just looking for personal training. Uh, which I guess would be a fitness coach. That's interesting. Um, well, now I'm not even seeing Buena Park on here because all the other stuff is closer. All right, well, um, and it does not say anything specifically about who to send the letter to. All right, so here's what we would do. <laughs> uh, this is what is tough. Um, now, I, I have done this pretty much every time I've ever tried to interview for a job. Um, so I was able to find it on their website. Now, if I if I was able to find that information on their site, um, 
it would have been taken care of automatically. I address that for, to that person. I'd be like, dear, you know, Mrs. Show and film, you know, uh, whatever. Um, wasn't able to find it. So instead, I would probably call that location. I'd probably call that location and say, you know, um, what's the name of the training manager and try to get as much information as I can. They're not going to know I called, you know, they have no idea like who I am. I didn't give my name or anything like that. Um, you know, in the training manager's info, uh, the person at the front desk is going to give that up pretty readily because that person gets a lot of phone calls every day from prospective people who are looking to maybe sign up for training or, you know, this or that or the other. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of research now. I'm really, really, really worried about it. Uh, you know, about them being like, why are you asking for this info? Who are you? And then all of a sudden that reflecting poorly on me. Uh, if I'm really worried about it, I'll call and I'll use someone else's name and try to be anonymous, you know? Uh, but honestly, you don't have to take it that far. You can just call in and, and ask for their name uh, and contact information. Can I get their name and their email? Um, I'd like to reach them, out to them about something, you know? Uh, and that's it. That's all you have to do. So when you're addressing your cover letter, it is always going to show that you did your research if you are addressing it to a specific person. I know it feels a little weird to have to do all this digging, but trust me, guys, it makes a world of difference. Um, again, you know, my picture was on the on the website, right? So like when people would apply for jobs, they would see like my name up there and they would know that I was in charge of hiring. And I would, well, not everybody, but some people who did their research, those are the types of cover letters and resumes that I always paid the most attention to because I want someone who's putting the effort in to actually hunt around and, and do the research. So always try to address your cover letters to a specific person if you can. Um, do not send out mass letters or uh, like we call them like form letters um, where it is just like you sounding like a robot, like, hello, I'm applying for the job of personal trainer and I saw that you are hiring. That doesn't say anything about like who the person is. It doesn't say anything about, you know, what the position, it, you know, you know that it's a personal trainer job, but yeah, that's the industry, right? Um, I have a lot of experience. You know, if you're just sending out like the same letter to every single person, uh, it's not customized. It shows that you didn't put any effort in. Um, now it's okay to like have sort of a template, which is what we are writing. Uh, we're gonna write you guys a template so that you can change things up a little bit and just sort of keep the core sentence the same, but maybe pull out and swap out names and things like that. That's okay. But a mass letter, it's like to whom it may concern. Hello, my, you know, like you sound like a robot. It's just not gonna work. Uh, do not send a freaking picture. Uh, I know it's LA guys, and I know that like a lot of folks are actors out there. Uh, and in this town, it is very common to send headshots and things like that. Do not freaking do that in this industry. That is not what this industry is. Um, that is totally ridiculous. Um, don't send, try to get too personal. Be careful with that. Um, you do want to try to keep it professional. Uh, make sure you're, and then, this, you know, some stuff that's obviously like very, kind of goes without saying, spell their names correctly, obviously, um, use their proper titles. Um, uh, and then you're going to try to emphasize your top selling points. So in your cover letter, when you're thinking about like what to write about, what are you, what sort of sets you apart from the competition? I mean, I can tell you one uh, pretty much already, uh, like right off the bat, um, you guys are all highly educated, much more so than a lot of personal trainers that are out there. I would even argue that in some cases, um, you guys have more specialized knowledge than even, you know, people who are studying like kinesiology and getting a four-year degree. You know, they have a lot of anatomy and physiology and biology classes, absolutely, more time than we spend on it. Um, but we are nine months of focusing on the job of personal training. Uh, we are talking, our conversations always center around how to work with a client. Classes I took, they're all centered around, you know, understanding what the anatomy and the physiology is and how the body works. And that's great. But like, I never got any coaching on how to translate that information to like one of my clients. Um, I never got any information about like how to time out my freaking sessions uh, or make sure that I keep my clients moving during, you know, their workouts to keep them from getting bored, uh, how to schedule my appointments, things like that. Um, you guys have a leg up on stuff like that. 
you know, our conversations are centered around how to work. It's a vocational school, which literally means like work focused, right? Um, so emphasize that in your in your cover letter. Say like, hey, I went to a you know a, a vocational school where we practiced and studied like personal training, you know, on mass, right? Um, Make sure you're, and this is kind of interesting, make sure you're always using single space, single space paragraphs uh, and use one inch margins. So when you are setting up, you know, your document, uh, you know, just make sure like, you know, paragraph wise, it's always set on single. You can see mine by default was set on double. Um, and then make sure that your, uh, your layout for your page, you know, classic one inch margins. For the most part, you shouldn't have to adjust this. Um, if you're using like Google Docs, for instance, which is what we're going to use, um, uh, by default, it should be, you know, pretty much already set. But uh, if we just go blank here, uh, you know, we can see, you know, we can get a format um, and take a look at our paragraph styles. Uh, yeah, we're going to go normal text. So that's that's automatically going to have us uh, kind of set up there. Um, and then see here uh, format page uh, is it page orientation no uh, I know it's already going to be set up because it's always like that anyways uh, where the heck do they keep this thing <laughs> uh, man well, whatever. We can see this is one inch. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's one there. Yeah, it's one inch margins all around, except I didn't check the bottom. Yep, bottom's one inch as well. Um, I gotta, I'll have to look that up. Um, so that is, you know, always one inch margins, always left justify your document. Uh, I've seen I've seen weird cover letters where people think they're being really fancy. Uh, let me see. You go to canva.com. Um, Canva is something, by the way, if anybody is interested in using, uh, you guys are more than welcome to actually do this uh, for resumes, but please don't use their cover letters. Their cover letters are fancy looking, but um, I do not need you to put me on a group text. Um, you'll sometimes see like these types of letters where it's like real fancy looking. Um, you know, uh, obviously that's a Christmas letter, but <laughs> no, those are letters to Santa. Uh, <laughs> so something like this, right? Like this is really cool looking. Like, you know, I get it. Like the appeal here um, is that this is a very fancy, you know, kind of letterhead, right? Um, I don't fully dislike this. But like at the same time, this looks like something you would receive in your email or it looks like something that's like being sent out from a company. It honestly doesn't fit the cover letter uh, space very well. There's actually a little bit too much going on here and it draws attention away. Now, it can be kind of as simple as just like kind of getting away, getting rid of that border. And honestly, that actually makes a huge difference in my opinion. Um, and you can see like the contact information down here. So there's definitely some fancier cover letters out there. You can see like, I don't fully dislike something like this either. Um, you know, I would definitely not, I would again, do not get it, get as much color out of there as possible guys. Um, you really do want to keep this, you know, simple. Um, but like, this isn't terrible, you know, but don't, don't get too fancy with it where you'll sometimes see I'm not seeing too many examples over here, but always left to justify your documents. You know, I've seen cover letters, I've had cover letters come across my desk where it's just centered for some reason. And it's like, why? it's like very hard to read. Um, and honestly, I wish that I were, uh, you know, if I'm being honest here, I'd like to tell you guys that I've peeled through every word, every letter on every cover letter and every resume I've ever gotten but I absolutely have fallen prey to just like any other employer uh, when I've gotten like a cover letter that is just hard to read or like format in a way that like doesn't draw my eye in, I get bored and I've probably just tossed it. And then that person's immediately out of the running. I hope that I am exaggerating a little bit. I hope that I've given everybody a fair shake, but honestly, I know that I'm human. And if it doesn't draw me in, you know, I'm not gonna read it. Um, so 
so always use single space, always left justify your document. Uh, now, most important information uh, that I would say, make sure you are listing your freaking phone number and email on your cover letter. I personally uh, like to have like a header. Um, I like to have like a header that has my um, uh, information on it, like you can see here. Uh, is a very basic cover letter, right? Um, you can see there's my contact information. And then I will still put that contact information later in the actual paragraph of my cover letter as well. Um, so that is a big freaking thing to do. Um, make sure that you do that, right? Always have your contact. Your contact info should be so easy to find. You want these people to get in touch with you, right? Um, so list your phone number, list your email. Mention the date that you are writing the letter uh, below your return address if you are putting your return address. Generally, though, in today's world, that's actually not going to happen for the most part. Um, that is something if you are doing like a physical cover letter, uh, which is pretty rare. You know, there's not a lot of snail mail to that. Um, so chances are you're going to be listing that information on the digital version, which your email is going to have a timestamp on it anyways. Uh, and then one other thing, do not use acronyms on your cover letter. Um, so do not call it Sochi, call it Southern California Health Institute. Don't call it NASM, call it National Academy of Sports Medicine. The only exception that I think is okay, and this, is, this goes for your resumes as well, but the only thing, exception that I think is okay is if you say CPT, you know, that's literally the industry that you're hiring for, you know, certified personal trainer, but it's not going to hurt you to write the whole thing out either. Um, so uh, don't use freaking acronyms, guys. It's just not a very good idea. Make sure you're writing everything out. All right. So uh, we are looking at the modern cover letter content. Now, uh, in the past, a three paragraph cover letter was sort of most standard. Um, you can still do that nowadays if you want to. However, uh, it has become a little bit more popular in recent years to do a four paragraph situation. So uh, all that means is that uh, rather than trying to come up with your third paragraph and being like, you know, so in closing, I think I'd be an excellent candidate for the job. Uh, rather than writing something like that and then putting your contact info in, you can have just a very brief sentence at the very end of your paragraph, which is, I can be reached from the hours of so-and-so to so-and-so at, and then phone number and email. Thank you for your time. There you go. That's literally everyone's final paragraph. Um, so uh, that is definitely something we are looking at. Um, Again, you guys can still do the three paragraph version if you want. You just have to be, you have to work your contact information into a closing paragraph about why you're still very good for the job. The four paragraph version just lets you put your contact info as its own sort of separate thing. So uh, first paragraph introduces where you found the job posting. So the first paragraph, this is another kind of interesting thing about cover letters before we kind of dive into this. Um, so we've already said our fourth paragraph is literally just like, I can be reached at so-and-so, at so-and-so, boom, right? Um, everyone's fourth paragraph is basically the same. It's just, great, thanks for reading this. Here's my contact info, call me, you know? Um, well, guess what? Your first paragraph is also kind of the same for everybody. Um, and so it's literally going to just introduce where you found the job posting. Uh, hello, my name is Brad Thompson, and I found your job posting on the NASM job board. Hello, my name is Brad Thompson. I found your job uh, that you were hiring for the position of fitness director. I found your posting on the Orange Theory website. Hello, my name is Brad Thompson. Uh, I am interested in the position of personal trainer at Crunch. I found your job posting on Indeed.com. Anything like that, that's literally going to be your first paragraph. It is as simple as it gets. Um, and again, this is, I know, like we are talking about being an individual, but this is not where you do it. In that first paragraph, you pretty much write the same thing that everyone's going to write, which is just you introducing yourself and you telling them where they found, where you found the job posting. It is no different than like that dumb conversation that we all have, which is like, Hi, how are you doing? 
I'm good. Yeah, it's like a salutation or like, so what do you do for a living? What brought you to LA? You know, like all the the same conversation all of us have had a hundred thousand times. We don't know what to talk about. How's the weather today? It's it's just an opener. That's all it is meant to do. It's just meant to be a conversation starter. Um, it isn't where you are necessarily like, you know, fully selling yourself. Um, so you need to include what job you are applying for. Make sure you're always saying that in there, the job title as it's listed on the job posting, um, where you found the job posting. So hi, I found your job, you know, you're posting on indeed.com. Um, what, you know, like I said, what specific position. And then if you want to, you can start to allude to your career goals and your objectives in this first paragraph. However, that's really where the second paragraph is going to come in. So, you know, um, that's sort of, uh, that's an example, that's, that's what we're seeing there. So here's an example, uh, or two examples here. Uh, again, I don't know why NASM decided to use these examples. I'm assuming they are directly out of the textbook, um, but they are not personal trainer examples. <laughs> but um, here's some examples, right? My outgoing personality, my finance experience, and my recently completed education make me a strong candidate for a position as a financial analyst within your company. You'll notice I like that's not bad. It's got the job title in it, right? Financial analyst. Um, but I actually really don't like that one. It doesn't say, um, you know, where they found the job posting, and it is not leading leaving them a lot of room to talk about, um, you know, uh, their strengths and weaknesses later down the road because it's already kind of talking about some of it. Uh, but I do like the recently completed education line. You'll notice that I stole that actually later. Uh, in the example version I've got for you guys. Uh, here's a different one. I want to apply for the position of salesperson within your company. I read a recent article which highlighted your company as one of the fastest growing leaders in the business to business sector. Uh, and I enjoyed a chance to bring my proven track record in sales to your team. So this version, you can tell this is sort of a prospective job list. This probably isn't even necessarily someone who's already hiring. You know, they're definitely saying like, hey, I heard about you and was like, that's who I want to work for. This is still a really exciting opening line, right? It doesn't necessarily say what job position was posted, but it does say specifically what they want to work for, who, what, why, uh, what position they want and why they want to work for them, which is exciting, right? Uh, so that's your first paragraph, right? It's your, it's your salutation, right? It's literally just, uh, you are just saying hi to someone, right? It's the opening line. Um, second paragraph is where you get to throw your oomph on it, right? This is where you start to sell yourself. So your second paragraph is going to describe any recent skills that you've developed, which all of you guys, your Sochi students, you're literally developing new skills right now. <laughs> so right when you get hit the ground running, like as you graduate out of school, you've got a lot of recent skills that you can describe in that second paragraph. Uh, you can highlight some of your work experience if you have it, even if it's not necessarily relevant uh, to personal training. Like it's, let's say um, you've worked as like a nurse before, right? That's still very medically based, right? It's a lot of information on physiology. You've definitely worked with customers before or patients in this example, right? Uh, if you've worked front desk at a gym, that's a great example of work experience that is somewhat transferable. Um, and then include your education, right? Uh, obviously you're developing skills while you're here at Sochi, but you know, we are educating you. So, um, when you're highlighting any of your past work experience, you're just trying to find how any of your previous work experience can help you fulfill the duties for the position that you're applying for. So maybe you haven't necessarily, like Kenny, uh, we were, I, it sounded the other day, like you've worked a little bit in sales. Um, maybe it doesn't sound like it was very extensive, but a little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. There's no reason you cannot include that on your cover letter. What were you selling? Um, it was like kind of like telemarketing stuff. Like, Ooh, oh, rough. It was that horrible. Yeah. Brutal job. Um, I'm glad you survived and you're here with us. <laughs> uh, you made it out alive, man. That's more than most people who do telemarketing. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so that's a that's a good example, right? Like, um, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to say like, 
hey, like I was telemarketing and that would make me a great personal trainer. But you could say something like, you know, I've worked in sales before, right? That's a skill that I've developed. Um, and that's, I would argue, one of the hardest types of sales that, out, that are out there. Um, so you're trying to figure out a way that like your past experiences can help fulfill you. I've even had personal trainers. Um, I've had cover letters come across my desk and I've seen like pretty green trainers who are really brand new. Uh, to the industry, but I've seen where like their cover letter says like, hey, I was a hairstylist for 10 years and decided to make a career change. I love that kind of story. I'm like, you worked in hair with like the angriest people, pickiest people in the world, like constantly telling you exactly what they wanted. And then no one's ever happy with their haircuts. Like, you know, you've got that level of customer service uh, and you've like worked with customers like that. I'm down to hire you as a personal trainer because I know you're going to keep your cool and I know you're going to like treat your clients really well and you're going to keep them happy because you've got those skills. Um, I'm into it, you know? So uh, it's not always direct like work experience. I know you guys are graduating from here. You may not have worked as a personal trainer before. That does not mean that you don't have work experience. Um, so you can also emphasize like, how can you emphasize like any achievements uh, or like things like, you know, that, that are problem solving. So for instance, in the hairstylist example, you could say something like, you know, I worked as a stylist for 10 years um, and have a lot of experience like in customer service, uh, helping my clients get exactly what they want. I want to bring those skills to the realm of personal training and help my clients get the results that they want. Somebody said something like that in their cover letter. I'd be like, woof, yeah, I'm hiring this person. They're passionate. They're excited. Like, you know, they get what this industry is all about. Like, we're here to help people, right? Um, I'm into it. You know, I'll totally hire somebody like that. You told me you worked as a mechanic uh, and you've worked with customers and you've helped them, like guide them and stuff. You've educated them. Um, I want a trainer who knows how to explain things to their clients, right? And explains why they're doing what they're doing, right? Um, you tell me you've worked in like, a, you know, a situation where you've had to explain to people exactly like what steps you're taking uh, in order to put their minds at ease and make them feel much more comfortable. Great. You know, put it in your second paragraph. So emphasize any achievements, emphasize any problem solving skills that you've developed, uh, anything that you think is transferable. So you can see here uh, in our sort of example copies, uh, as a recent graduate of the San Francisco School of Business, I don't need to do that voice, uh, San Francisco School of Business, I put myself through school by working jobs in advertising, sales, and retail. I feel these business experiences helped solidify my work ethic and build on my formal education. So clearly this person's applying for like a very classic kind of business job. Um, but it says that they worked while they were in school, putting themselves to school. That helped them develop their work ethic. Um, that is exactly the kind of thing that we're looking for, right? Uh, I will also totally hire somebody who's really green as long as I know they are also a really hard worker. That's what I care most about, you know? Um, uh, it's a, it's kind of a bummer um, because unfortunately due to COVID, we had to let this person go. Uh, but the last person I hired here at Sochi uh, to be one of our other instructors, because we used to have, uh, you know, several locations and stuff, um, you know, they were pretty new to the industry. They had only graduated uh, and been working as a trainer for about two years. Normally, like, you know, we're looking for teachers who have like five years experience. But this person uh, had gone through like an NASM program. They had worked with NASM directly in Arizona, uh, which is pretty unique. A lot of people hadn't done that. Uh, and they had been like a teacher and a tutor, um, you know, to pay for that while they were like in college. Uh, they worked for like a tutoring company. Uh, and I was like, okay, so they clearly have like a lot of experience, like, like classroom experience, you know? Um, and then they also told me they were like one of the biggest reasons they wanted to work in Sochi was because they wanted to like work in a traditional like teaching environment um, because that's what they wanted to do. They were working on getting their master's uh, and they wanted to teach kinesiology at like a university level. And I was like, let's do this, you know, like I'm stoked. And they were a great instructor. They really like nailed it. Um, they didn't have as, you know, as much like experience in the realm of uh, where they had worked. Like, you know, they didn't have as many uh, <laughs> this industry has a lot of crazy stories, uh, that Mo and I have, <laughs> you know, um, but like they were a great instructor, you know? Um, so 
I will always hire somebody. I will always look for something like that and, and put a lot of emphasis on it. If you tell me you've got work ethic, you tell me you've got transferable skills uh, and that you're excited about the job. Uh, and if you tell me that you wanna use this job to get you to a higher level later, I like that. I, I think that that's great. Um, be cautious in saying that like, I'm trying to work here for six months and then go somewhere else, you know? nobody wants to hire somebody that they know they're going to have to go through the dumb interview process again. Um, here's a dirty secret for you guys. You think job hunting is hard. Hiring someone is just as brutal. Um, it sucks. People don't respond to you, not because they are rude. They're doing it because they get a hundred applications a day. Uh, most of them are pretty rough. Um, and then interviewing people is just like pulling teeth. It is awful. Uh, you know, I want the interview process to be over with them before it freaking begins. Um, they want to hire you guys. So, you know, don't be, don't be nervous about things like that. We'll, we'll talk about that on the interview day. Um, so another example, uh, this May, I will receive my BA degree from Highland University with a dual degree in economics and art history. Recently developed my senior thesis exploring the development of poster art in America have been awarded academic honors. So this person very clearly is applying for that advertising job. Uh, we got sort of a sales job up here. We got an advertising job down here. Uh, I like it. I think that that's really interesting. They're like, you know, they studied poster art in America. All right, you, you, there's a cool project they had in school. Kind of interesting thing to bring up in the cover. That's like, hey, you know, uh, I did a, you know, a 30 question quiz, you know, like, it's a weird thing to bring up, but this is clearly something that's actually very, very relevant. Um, so you guys don't necessarily need to like talk about any of the homeworks or things that you did while you were at Sochi, but you could absolutely talk about how like, you know, you've done uh, uh, practiced uh, fitness assessments, you know, on fellow students. You have, um, you know, built programs consistently. You'll do that with Mo, by the way. You'll be building a lot of programs with Mo. Uh, for a wide variety of clientels and curveballs and things like that. So, you know, there's definitely stuff to talk about uh, related to, you know, before you even get out there in the industry, you know, um, there's a lot to talk about that you'll learn just from your education alone. Uh, so that's your second paragraph. Describe your recent skills, work experience, and education. Now, third paragraph, this is where you're really going to drive things home and tailor yourself specifically to the job. So if I were you, Again, I would pay very close attention uh, to uh, whatever job I'm applying for, right? Uh, oh, that was the website. Um, so if I go to careers at 24 Hour Fitness again, and I take a look, I'm just going to pick the first one I see. Um, what? What happened? Club careers. Why are these all? <laughs> Seriously? Looking for the personal training one, please. <laughs> Fitness coach, please. God dang it. All right, so um, I'm going to read this whole thing three, four times until I know everything about it, right? Uh, they're dedicated to making a healthier, happier world. They're passionate about a community that's accessible, affordable, and welcoming to everyone. Um, so, you know, they're looking for people who are committed to be the best part of someone else's day. I will probably steal a sentence or two out of this job application, right? Um, they're looking for someone who's authentic, sincere, and open-minded, uh, demonstrates integrity, de dependability, and flexibility. Uh, all right, great. Now I know exactly what they're looking for, right? Um, so I'm going to pay attention to those things. That's what I'm going to put into the third paragraph. If they say, you know, they like people who explain things, I'm like, oh, buddy, I love explaining things. You know, I'm going to put that in my res in my cover letter. So continue tailoring yourself to the job specifically. Use the duties and the requirements listed on the job posting to further elaborate on what you bring to the company. Analyzing you guys as Sochi students, like if I were a Sochi student and I were applying for this job right here, um, uh, they're looking for your strong teaching skills and ability to connect and motivate a wide variety of fitness levels will increase member retention, right? So like you guys have been taught, I mean, we spend time in class, right? Um, talking about how we explain things to our clients, right? Um, this whole, you know, we've been working on these overactive, underactive muscles lists and we constantly tell our clients like, hey, you've got a muscle that's doing this and a muscle that's doing this. 
here's what we need to do to fix it, right? Um, so include that in your cover letter. It's like at my school, we emphasize teaching our clients, um, you know, what it means to develop their posture and why postural, their postural distortions may exist. Uh, we've, and they're looking for people with a wide variety of fitness levels. At my school, we also focused on uh, working with many special populations, whether it was clients who are training to be athletes or clients who have uh, diabetes who are trying to, you know, regulate their blood sugar levels. We've talked about how to work with those clients. So just by reading this job application, you know, I've paid attention and catered myself specifically to this job. Going to something completely different. Let's look at like orange uh, theory fitness. Um, uh, orange theory fitness. Okay. Here's a sales associate. Now this is definitely not a personal training job. Let me, let me see if I'm going coach. Yeah, there's a coach. All right. So here's a coach posted 13 days ago. They're looking for a positive energetic person. I would definitely include as much positive and energetic, you know, sentences as I can. Uh, promotes an upbeat, enthusiastic. Da, da, da. Ooh, not a lot of information on this one. All right, so this one, you know, there's actually not a lot of info here. Um, but it sounds like they are looking for intermediate knowledge of physiology, exercise technique, and body mechanics, right? So you can highlight, like, while I was in school uh, at Sochi, we studied exercise physiology, nutrition. Uh, anatomy and physiology, kinesiology. You can explain some of the maybe heavier science classes um, to your client, uh, to your you know, your cover letter. Um, again, there's always information, guys, that you can kind of pull nuggets from. Uh, maybe I don't even necessarily just have to look at this, right? Um, I could just look at the company and be like, what is it like at Orange Theory Fitness? I could watch some videos on YouTube, you know, learn a little bit about the company and be like, you know, uh, we learned how to explain things and, you know, time out our workouts. That's actually the kind of things that they're looking for at Orange Theory. They want to make sure that, you know, the one session ends, the next one begins. Um, also, Orange Theory is literally all about target heart rate zones. Pretty sure you and I have talked about that plenty of times, right, guys? Um, so include that in your resume. Ah, <laughs> include that in your cover letter, right? Um, so how can your experience help you within this company, right? You are continuing to tailor yourself specifically. So this person this is the financial analyst. I believe that the maturity skills and abilities to have a successful career as a financial analyst, not bad. It's a little simple, um, but I love this one. At university, I focused my extracurricular efforts on writing and editing for the local newspaper. Subscriptions went up by 10%. That if you have like a specific statistic uh, that you feel like sets you apart from the competition, include it. I know a lot of you guys in this call right now uh, have really high GPAs. Um, so if you've got a GPA above like 3.25, uh, I would say like include that. Be like, you know, I was an excellent student in school, um, you know, uh, or I had excellent attendance. That's a really good one to include, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, you can do a little bit of a humble brag there, you know? Um, and then there's fourth paragraph. Fourth paragraph, uh, this is where you're gonna try to like nail it down and actually get your interview. So like I said, request your interview, offer your contact information, keep this short, keep it professional. It's not even really a paragraph. Um, like I said, my example here, it's almost always the same. It is always just, uh, I'd love to have the opportunity to meet. I can be reached at cell by 503-791-9453 or email at brad.lee.thompson at outlook.com. Done, right? Uh, we got some other examples here. Um, got so many cover letter examples that I can pull from. <laughs> uh, here's when we, we actually decided to go like one and a half space, but it still looks really good. Uh, I look forward to speaking with you further regarding any employment opportunities with Equinox Woodland Hills. I can be reached by cell at 555. Right. So that would work as well. I would probably include the email, but you can see we did put the email uh, and the phone number up here as well. Uh, here's a different version. Actually, that's the template. Sorry. Um, so it's actually not a different version. So we've got a million different ways we can write our cover letters, guys, but that final paragraph is almost the same for everybody. It's like, 
I'd love to speak from you. There's one pro tip that I will give you that I really like to do sometimes, uh, depending on how the rest of my cover letter was written. Um, one of the things I like to do is uh, I would love to speak to you further about, uh, you know, uh, any employment opportunities or what the job is. Um, I can be, I am available between the hours of this to this. That little nugget right there sometimes also makes you seem much more professional because it's actually showing them that it's like, look, I've got a schedule, you know, I'm working right now, but I do have time available for an interview. You know, I can be reached between 12 and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday or any time during the weekends at, and then put your cell phone number and then put your email. Um, that's great. That kind of thing shows that it's like, wow, you know, I love that. If they, maybe this person's already got clients um, and then they're, you know, they're working. They're telling me what times they have available. Um, employers appreciate that stuff, guys. It's, it's really helpful. So, um, Keep it short, keep it professional, include your cell phone and email information, and then include any of your availability um, for your phone or in-person interviews. Um, and that's another thing. They'll also know like when to bring you in if you put that in your cover letter. Uh, you'll talk about it again, obviously, during your first round of interview on the phone. Uh, but you know, it's already been sort of like put on the table a little bit. So here's some example uh, closers here. You can see, I look forward to speaking with you further regarding any sales related opportunities with company X. Uh, I can be reached by cell at 415 blah, 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 blah. Uh, this one's kind of an interesting one. This is somebody who's applying uh, for a job not in an area that they live. So it's like, I intend to visit Chicago in early April to prepare for my move to the city in the summer. I'd appreciate the opportunity to meet with you during my upcoming trip and discuss the possibility of my employment with your company. That's bold, but I love it. <laughs> uh, it definitely needs to have their contact information in there. Um, but that's that's a really, really fun one as well. It's like, hey, I don't even live here, but like, here's when I want to be in town, you know? Um, when I moved away from LA back to Oregon for a little while, uh, I had two jobs lined up before I even got there. Um, I did a Skype interview with one. Uh, and then I pretty much had the other one nailed down and did like a sort of a final interview the day I flew back in um, and uh, had both those jobs lined up. I left on like a Friday and started working like the next Wednesday. Um, so I didn't have a gap and you didn't even have a gap in paychecks, really. Um, and that's all because like I planned ahead. I wrote really professional cover letters, resumes. You know, I represented myself accurately. Um, so. Other things you need to consider. Actually, really quickly, questions on our four paragraphs. Any questions, comments, or concerns so far? How y'all feeling? Good. Yeah. I know it's a little bit uh, different, different pace of conversation today. <laughs> um, the next three days are, are very unique compared to the rest of the nine months. <laughs> um, but we don't have to talk about muscles or actinomyosin protein, so that's nice. <laughs> um, so uh, next thing you need to consider, you want to consider who your references are. This is something that is probably going to be more related to your resume. A lot of times, like references are something you bring in with you. Um, you know, you've included references on your application process. Um, a lot of times, they'll ask for references in the application that you fill out. And then you will have uh, uploaded your resume uh, or sent or brought in your resume and given it to them in person. Uh, you can also give them a references sheet in person as well. And references sheets are very basic. Uh, um, you know, uh, references sheet. Um, you know, they are the simplest freaking thing uh, ever getting it to load real quick. Um, so you can see like, here's, you know, this is my reference sheet, right? Um, the font is different than I remember it. It's all messed up. That's okay. Let's go and just re-click that and unbolt everything. <laughs> Whatever. I don't need to do any of that. All right. Uh, but that's really weird that this is like 
not all the same. <laughs> um, probably just got changed when I like uploaded it to the internet. But you can see here, right? Here's, this is my old one. This is like my old contact info where I used to live. Uh, and then it's like, you know, my program director where I used to live. Um, you know, uh, this is a friend uh, and, you know, CEO of a company. And then here was like my old manager at a boot camp as well. So different versions uh, of references sheets out there. But uh, sometimes you may, you know, so when you're including your reference sheet, um, you know, just a list of people that you can cite as references, it should usually be uh, people in a professional capacity. It should be current and former employers. Um, it can be a little bit of personal references, but I really only include one if I were you guys. Uh, really shouldn't use family members for the most part. Um, but uh, make sure one thing that you always want to do with your references sheet, make sure you always get permission uh, and give a heads up to the person that you are using as a reference. By the way, anybody in here, uh, if you guys want to use me, instructors, uh, we make really great references as well. And I feel like at this point, I've kind of perfected the art of a really good sale. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to like selling my Sochi students, I do the classic like, I guess it, I, it's almost like humble bragging. I do like the uh, the very realistic assessment. It's like, oh, uh, you know, Cody. Oh, they're yeah, they're a really excellent student. They work really really hard. Uh, I will say their perfectionism sometimes, uh, you know, can lead to very high quality work, even if it is, uh, you know. Uh, even if they are sort of pouring their heart and soul into it and, you know, putting a little bit more effort than you would expect. So it almost sounds like I'm saying something negative, but it's like all of those things are good things, you know? <laughs> like, um, so references are kind of a fun one. If you guys want to use myself, I'm sure Mo as well. Um, we are all happy to use, um, to be references for you guys. So professional references. Um, usually you only need about three of them. If you want to have one friend in there as a character reference, that's okay as well. But for the, if you've got three professional references, do that. That's great. Um, just make sure you're letting your references, whoever you're using as your reference, let them know so they can expect like a phone call, you know? Um, like I don't answer my phone if I don't recognize the phone number. Um, I just let it go to voicemail so I can call that person back. Uh, but that is not always true if I know it's like, hey, one of my references may be calling you like today or one of this job I'm applying for may call you today or tomorrow. Um, and then this is just a special little treat. I wanted to show you guys this video, speaking of references, because we actually don't have a lot of information on references. So I thought this would be kind of fun. This is totally not actually advice. Uh, guy acts as Um Okay, so this is a prank phone call, and there's this radio show in Australia. Uh, this is a prank phone call where they were going to call a guy, and they were like, hey, man, I just need a reference. My job employ my employer is going to call you in a little bit. Can you just make me seem like a really good employee? I told them, I just picked this number at random. <laughs> so watch, this is, I love this video so much. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Whee! Hello, James speaking. Oh, yeah. G'day, mate. Sorry. Um, my name's Tim. How are you? Good, mate. How are you? Mate, I uh, wonder if you can help me out of a slightly sticky situation. I'm just about to go into a job interview at an accounting firm. I've got to, I've got to put like a references down on a list. I don't have enough to fill it up. I've, I've just... I don't know why, but I just, I've written down a random number and I just thought I'd call it to see if it's a real thing. It's your number. Yeah. Oh, so you've just pulled this out of nowhere. Yeah, go on. <laughs> well, I, I just didn't want to leave an empty list, but then it's occurred to me they might call it. But I doubt they will. But if someone calls you and says, do you know Tim Barnard? Yeah. Well, can yeah, you I just... Say used to work for, what, what jobs are for? This is, I'm going for a job as an, at an accounting firm, but just say that it, I'm just going to put you down as a personal reference. Yeah, sweet. I'll just say I know you from way back, blah, blah, blah. I'll say you're a ripper bloke. You know, I've got you covered. Is that all right? Yeah, not a problem, dude. Mate, you're a legend. I'm going in like one minute. I mean, I doubt you'll get a call, but if you do, Tim Barnard. Yeah, yeah, sweet. That's no worries, dude. Thank you, Still James. Easy. Cheers. See you, mate. Have a good one. Good luck with it. <laughs> Hello, James speaking. 
Oh, hi, it's Graham Byrne there. Is that James? Yes. Great. Uh, it's Graham here. From, I'm calling from Kells & Co. We're an accounting firm. I've just come out of an interview with a friend of yours, Tim Barnard. Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. Yes, um, who looked to be a great candidate, so we thought we'd uh, make our way back uh, through the references quite promptly. Um, you know Tim? Yeah, I know Tim personally. I've known him for a few years now. Um, we, go, we go back a fair while. How long have you known Tim? Uh, I've known Tim for probably uh, 10 years old. How did you guys become friends? Through footy, the footy club. Right. Fantastic. Didn't strike me as a as a footy player. Um, oh, he wasn't really a player. He just more come in as a as a uh, spectator sort of thing. Oh, yes, helping out around the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. He'll be dealing with um, higher-end uh, companies in his role, businesses of profits of a million dollars plus. Does he know him to be good with money? Do you know anything about that? Uh, from my understanding, like he'd, he'd help out a lot um, with a few fundraisers and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Um, Any other examples of him taking on responsibility? He helps out the treasurer a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, um, and, yeah, he does that a fair bit. How many languages does... Uh, does Tim speak? Do you know? From what I know, I know it's definitely two. Um, yep, yeah. yeah, that's we've got that one down here uh, as well. That's all right. I was just that's double checking. All I know of though. Yes. What was the other one opposed, uh, in, in addition to English? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. I'm I'm complete Australian, so I never really speak it to. I just know he does. Yeah, right. Just knew he's bilingual. Um, yeah. He, that's all right. no, sorry, sorry, I can't be sort of out there. That's all right. Just describe to us the best, um, the best thing about him, appearance-wise. Appearance-wise, well, what you see is pretty much what you get with him. He, um, he's just he, he's a go-getter, and and when he says to, that things are going to be done, they get done. Fantastic. Uh, sorry, James. <laughs> James, sorry, James. mate. It's Hamish and Andy here, James. Oh, you're kidding! <laughs> James, mate, you are the best guy in the world. You're the best bloke in the world, James. You are kidding me. Oh, you know what? I was actually thinking, how am I going to get in contact with Tim to say that I've done such a good job for him? <laughs> so... That's, I mean, that's what you want in a reference. <laughs> you want somebody who's going to be as amazing as this random Australian guy. <laughs> so anyway, I know it doesn't have anything to do necessarily with like this lesson, but that is, I saw that video years ago and I've shown it every time I teach this class because it is like one of my favorite videos on the internet. Like what an awesome guy. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so, uh, reference request letters. If you are, uh, asking for a reference, honestly, it should probably be somebody that you have a pretty good relationship with. Um, you can, like, if you had a, if you have like a manager that you used to work for, uh, maybe you didn't necessarily work directly under them, but they knew of your work quality or something like that. And you wanted to like send them an email saying like, hey, I'd really appreciate it if I can use you as a reference uh, and then wait to hear from them. Yeah, okay, that's a reference request letter. Um, so you can send someone like a very brief email, but the idea here is that you're just giving them, uh, you're just gonna communicate with them, you know, who your potential employer is, what the position that you are applying for. Um, you can put in a current copy of your resume in there if you want to, um, just so that they know that, you know, what information you're highlighting and then they can make sure that they are, um, you know, reciprocating that rather than saying something that might not match with your resume directly. Uh, <laughs> you know, like in that video, we just watched that guy. He said the dude spoke two like He has no idea if he speaks two languages. <laughs> like that's the only part of that video where I'm like, ah, you're taking it a little bit far, dude. Um, but yeah, like don't, you don't want to put your reference, uh, whoever is acting as your reference, you don't want to put them in a weird place. So, um, and then give them an, a description of the job uh, that you are hiring for so that they know what to talk about in order to like highlight your awesome skills, right? Uh, and then, you know, give them a thank you card, thank you note, whatever, if you want to um, let them know. Uh, there are also job declination letters. So there is like saying like, hey, 
Thank you so much for the hire. You know, if you get like a job that says, hey, we want to hire you, we'd love to bring you on. Uh, but maybe you've been job hunting like crazy and now you've got to pick between two jobs. Um, sending a job declination letter that is brief, it's, you know, uh, it's a very polite thing to do. It's usually just two paragraphs in length saying like, thank you so much. I look forward, you know, um, look forward to the possibility of working together later down the line, uh, but I'm going in a different direction, you know? Um, tell them thank you for the offer, you know, uh, just try to be as polite and professional as possible. A lot of times, again, this is an email nowadays. Um, rarely is it, you know, uh, you, you know, you're not going to go like print a letter and bring it in in person and be like, I'm here for my first day, lol JK. And then, you know, give them a letter that says that you're declining, you know, don't do something like that. Um, just send them a letter saying, uh, just send them an email saying like, thank you so much. Um, but through this job hunting process, you know, something else came up and I think I'm going to go in that direction. Um, you know, uh, just keep it short and keep it professional. Uh, so summarizing everything up, right? Uh, cover letters, they need to be structured. They need to be scripted, uh, so that you are, you know, writing things specifically. You're not just like trailing sentences. I, that is one thing. That's another thing that kind of drives me crazy. I mean, as long as you're keeping your cover letter to one page, this shouldn't really happen anyways, but I have definitely seen some train wreck cover letters that are just like, where it's just like someone Googled up like a, you know, uh, they just looked up like power words to use in a resume and then they just you can just action verbs and it's just like very clearly this person was just like taking all these letter you know uh best sentences to put in a cover letter um and they just sound really disjointed um and and just you know awkward and it's just like man what is going on um, so make sure that like, you know, your letter is actually like well-structured scripture that read your cover letter five, six, seven times, guys, um, read it over and over and over again to make sure that it makes as much sense as possible. You're proofreading it. Um, you know, try to distinguish yourself as a student, show them that like you're a recent graduate and that you do have skills and experiences, you know, um, it may not necessarily be like on the job experience just yet, but that's okay, guys. Um, just highlighting the fact that like at Sochi, this is a, a vocational curriculum. We are literally structuring our curric curriculum around the idea that like you are here to learn how to be a trainer. You're not just learning kinesiology for the sake of learning it, you know? Um, it's all very practical and applicable. So saying that on your cover letter is great. Um, again, remember it's always the first document that somebody's going to see. It's your first impression. Um, everybody filled out the application, you know, but you, if you have a cover letter, it could set you apart and it, you know, it gives you a unique voice. Um, and then always write, write one that is precise and addressed specifically to a person. That's also going to show that like you are the type of go-getter who went out and did a little bit of research, uh, and learned a little bit about, uh, your, your, you know, who you're applying for. Um, whenever I see something like that, I love it. I think it's, you know, um, I think that's always a really exciting thing to see. So um, questions, comments, concerns so far, guys. Everybody feeling good? All right, um, so I do wanna show you some examples here. Uh, so here's kind of a very basic uh, template that we wrote. Uh, this is sort of a starting version. This is a little fancy. Uh, if you don't have a website, you just delete it. Um, cell phone, put your, if you don't wanna put your address, I will say this has pretty much gone out of style. We still include it on here. Um, honestly though, nobody puts their address anymore. Uh, you should be including like where you live though. So if you said like Sherman, you know, Oaks, California, right? Or if you said like Reseda, California, right? Those are good examples of, you know, putting your location on there, uh, but your email should be on here for sure. So email, um, you know. Oh boy, this needs to be bigger. Sorry, let me fix that real quick. There we go. Um, cell phone. Ah. 
you know. Uh, so this is just a very basic template that we wrote out. Uh, and basically, it's like the idea, everything in brackets, you're just going to replace that uh, with your information. Um, industry role, if you want to go like, you know, certified personal trainer, you could just say personal trainer, you could say fitness coach. Um, whatever, right? Um, then you've got today's date. So today is 6 1 2021. Uh, you name of your future employer. So let's say, you know, uh, like I said, try to find this person's name, give them a call, right? Um, uh, let's say Jason Swoles, <laughs> uh, 24 hour. Uh, and honestly, I don't really include the addresses here anymore either. Um, and then that should be have a little space there. Uh, so I like hello, you can say, you know, uh, dear Mr. Swoles, if you wanted to, uh, I don't really like the dear thing. I think it's just a little bit, I don't know, too personal. Um, to me, it just sounds a little odd in a professional cover letter. My favorite opening to a cover letter is literally just hello. Um, I keep it really simple. You could, there's a million different ways. Uh, opening line to cover letter you can google there's a million you know interesting versions out there um is this actually what i want uh yeah you see dear hiring manager that's a classic one um let's see here opening salutation for a cover letter uh or greeting right yeah dear uh dear sir or madam to whom it may concern all those are fine. I don't know. I, I really do just like a simple like hello. I just think it's so simple. It's so quick. And they're not even glancing at that. Um, and I don't have to say like dear so and so I'm not showing like affection. I'm just showing like professionalism. Uh, but you can see it's like I wish to apply for the position as uh, I would say of instead of as a of personal trainer within your company. I recently read your ad on indeed.com and I believe my experience and recently completed education make me a strong candidate within your company. So right there, you're saying like what position you're applying for, right? You're saying where you found the ad and you're very briefly saying like why you think you'd be a good candidate, right? Uh, as a recent graduate of Southern California Health Institute, I am a National Academy of Sports Medicine CPT. So you can see, again, I avoided acronyms, but here it's like CPT is literally the industry title. Um, I could easily say, like, I could, you know, swap this out and say certified personal trainer. Uh, and then, you know, I'm going to say, like, while in school, uh, we studied several program design classes, as well as exercise physiology, nutrition, and corrective exercise. Uh, and while in school, I learned to evaluate and develop health and wellness solutions for a wide variety of clientele. Uh, not bad. I don't like the fact uh, that we got while in school in here twice. Um, so I'd probably say something like we studied uh, physiology and corrective exercise. Um, we also... We also worked to de evaluate and develop health and wellness solutions for a wide variety of clientele. So now, like, again, this kind of highlights the fact that uh, we are, you know, um, focusing on like how to actually work in this industry rather than just uh, saying like, hey, you know, I studied the book, I passed my test, I'm good to go. You know what I mean? Like we have the experience of like, like the hands-on practice that a lot of personal trainers out there don't, you know, they really just kind of dive right in. Uh, and then here's the third paragraph. This is where you're catering yourself specifically to the job that you are hiring for, right? Um, I did say within your company here, again, I probably wouldn't say within your company. I probably say, uh, position of personal trainer at 24 hour. Uh, um, so motivating people to work towards a common worthwhile goal is something that I find hugely enjoyable and rewarding. I also stole uh, this sentence, although I'm not a huge fan of it. I just put it in there. Uh, I have the maturity skills and abilities to have a successful career as a fitness professional. Uh, and I'd probably just include that. Um, and I would love to bring 
those skills to 24 hour fitness. Uh, I have experience providing personalized attention and professional instruction to my clients, as well as implementing solutions to my clients' unique needs and goals. So we got a lot of information about unique stuff here, uh, which if you remember what we read on the 24 hour website, they, they were all about like providing individualized programs, making people feel included, right? That paragraph right there kind of fits with that theme. Um, so we are catering ourselves specifically to the job at the very end. And then in my last paragraph, I'm just going to close it up by giving my contact information. I look forward to speaking with you further uh, regarding any employment opportunities with, insert company name, we're going to say 24 hour fitness. I can be reached by cell at, and then we would put our contact info. Or email at Yours sincerely, and we'll put. So uh, we whipped up a very generic, very easy cover letter uh, in not very much time, right? Um, so that's a very sort of uh, kind of basic approach here. I will say I don't love this line. It was, it was this. This is a format that we all kind of picked as a group last time. Me, I'm not a huge fan of it. <laughs> uh, how do I get this thing to go away? Can I just delete? Nope. Uh, what if I go none? Ah. There's a cell here. That's how they made this line. Cut. No. <laughs> ah, delete, bro. What's that? What was that question? Uh, so that is sort of how we're going to whip this up, guys. I've got uh, a templates for you guys that I can email you. Um, now, if you guys do want to go with something a little bit fancier, like if you want to go on Canva and do something like that, if you have a word processing uh, software that you prefer to use, uh, like uh, Apple Docs or whatever, um, you guys are always welcome to use that. Uh, and there are other ones out here as well. If I go to Google Docs again, um, there's some really solid ones out there, right? Like here's this regular generic like business letter, right? Um, and you can straight up just like copy and paste the information, right? Um, this is a business letter like from your company, but this would just be like, you know, your name. I don't like all this clip art here personally. I think it looks a little cheesy uh, and a little unprofessional, uh, but something like this, you know, um, your name, the date, their name, and then dear Mr. Reader. And then here's sort of the example paragraph. Um, this is really simple. It's it's not bad. Again, I don't like color in these darn things, but if you're going to print it on a black and white printer anyways, great. There you go. Color problem solved, you know? Um, so that is kind of uh, our cover letter, oof, cover letters in a nutshell. Um, so like I said, we're going to email um, these templates out. You don't have to use them. Uh, but you can use them. They are at your disposal. Um, <clears throat> we're going to use Google Docs because that way, like if you guys are editing it in real time uh, and you want to do a private Zoom call with me, we can both get on Google Docs simultaneously uh, and we can both see it at the same time and then we can both work on it, which is what I did with a lot of students last time. Uh, if you are feeling like that is a little overwhelming and that you are not gonna be able to do that, uh, that's okay as well. We are gonna meet in person, remember, next week. Uh, let's see, this is day two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On Wednesday the 9th, um, we'll be going over more of the sales and assessments stuff uh, like we have been this entire mod. But if you want to stick around afterwards, I'm going to make myself available for a couple hours after class uh, and we can sit down at a computer if you'd rather do like a Microsoft Word cover letter uh, and I can help every one of you guys individually. I just, we just got to book the times specifically so that like we don't everybody like sitting around and stuff. Um, but every, either way, everybody in here, guys, you're all walking away with a cover letter before this class is over. So you have at least one sort of hard copy that you can use as a template and just change key pieces of information, you know, like um, 
I'm going to leave this as I just wrote it, but I'm sure in six months when I teach this cover letter class again, you know, there are going to be little things that I change uh, and, you know, uh, kind of mess around with. So, uh, yeah, guys, any questions? Kenny, Bay, Andres, Isaiah, Cody, Lorian? It's good. Crystal clear. Gotcha. Love it. All right, guys. A little bit easier than some of the chemistry. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so uh, homework number one is up today. You're going to notice it's a lot of questions, mostly about like the different types of clubs to work in uh, from the last lesson. Um, and also like the components of a cover letter and things like that. So uh, you'll see homework one up there. You know, you can see an aspiring first trainer's first goal should always be to get certified. Uh, so that is going to be, uh, your homework number one and, uh, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Thanks Brad. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Have a good, good day. Good. All. good to see y'all. Bye honey.